Hi guys, my name is Lucas and I have a tie. I also, I'm also a pen tester. I would consider myself as a gray hat hacker, mainly because I tend to not break the rules, but get people pissed off. <laughs> and um, what I mean by pissed off, it's um, more annoyed. Um, sometimes they try to sue. I started like like as a little rug rat with a Commodore 64. Thank you, Grandma. Um, it was all fun and games. So you should do this in like ANSI graphics, but I know on some occasion the quality has been so so. So uh, I will actually upgrade to a newer operative system. It's probably the most secure operating system out there today, the Windows 3.11. <laughs> so, could we hack five IoT devices in 30 minutes? Bullshit. Can we hack, uh, I'll up the game, I'll hack 100. I'll hack 1,000. I'll hack 10,000. Let's do 10,000 IoT devices in 30 minutes. And usually I start with a story because that gets the audience, you know, pumped up. So imagine you got a new car, for instance, a, a nice car brand, like one of those new cars. And it's morning, you're running a bit late, but it's a perfect morning. Your coffee automatically turns on by itself. So when you wake up and you go down, the coffee is already ready. And your car is heating up outside. You eat your breakfast, drink your coffee, sit in the car, and it's Stockholm. From my experience, it's a lot of QEs. Now, you notice that your car behaves a little bit oddly, and by that I mean it doesn't beep when someone is close by. Usually it says beep, but this time it's not a sound. But you thought maybe you twiddle with the menu system and turn that one off. Now, in front of you there's a QE piling up. You got a nice car, so you press the brake a little bit. Nothing happens. The QE moves in faster. So you press the brakes, the pedal to the metal is the expression, and nothing happens. Your car swervels right and goes to a complete stop. Then it hits you. You are not in control of your car anymore. If someone had said that to me 10 years ago, I would say no. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ, watching too many sci-fi shows. If they told me that today, possible. Now, how many of you know what IoT is? Or what it stands for? Two guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Four or five, Oof, we're getting more. <laughs> no, so IoT is basically the Internet of Things. Things that you can connect to the Internet are very vague. It's like the word cyber. You kind of just throw it out there and play cool. Um, and all of your devices are connected. Like you can connect your, your light bulbs, and you can connect your, your drills and your stereo and your home entertainment system. It all talks together, and you get like notifications like, oh, the laundry is done. Way. Not that you really need it. Now, big data is also a, a, a good and nice word to use. And when you buy or use an IT product, you become the data. So you're actually sending information about what you're doing to companies. So what if we can hack the world and what if we can hurt people through the IoT devices? We will go a little bit deeper into what I recovered lately. Uh, some of you might have seen my talks before. This is the updated version. This contains a little bit more and a little bit extra for the next generation threat guys. And something I found five minutes ago. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So the, the thing I will cover today is something called MQTT, Message Query Telemetry Transport. And it was invented in like 1998, perhaps by Andy Stanford Clark and Arlene Nipper at IBM. They wanted a protocol that has simplicity, 
It should be simple to use, simple to set up, and no, no fuss, right? As well as it should have quality of service, which means that messages should be prioritized. Bandwidth efficiency. So if you have a server in the middle who receives the messages, they call it broker. I call it server. That's how gangster I am. Uh, <laughs> and you want to send data. One of them is on a modem connection, and one of them is on a fiber connection. Now, message going from message A to the server should reach user B's computer or user B's IoT device whatever you have connected, but the modem goes down. He won't receive the message. In normal cases, that would be death. In these cases, the server, broker, will actually <laughs> hold the message, right? Until user B comes back online with his laptop, and then he gets the message that says, uh, yo, your coffee was done like two hours ago, dude. It should be lightweight. It shouldn't take much space. It should be very CPU efficient. And this is how it's actually used today. It's used in industrial. It's used in logistics and transportation. So they might use the protocol to actually find the weight of a package and then send the data to some server that will calculate, oh my god, you're going to need a bigger truck. Maybe it doesn't say the oh my god thing, but still, you get the point. Medical, it's an efficient protocol to have, for instance, in a pacemaker or in an insulin pump. It's lightweight. So I borrowed a picture from HiveMQ to uh, illustrate how it's actually done. So you have the publisher. That can be a sensor. That can be your attic. That can be the temperature at home. Now, that one sends its data. It's 12 degrees Celsius to a server that is online. Now. You can have your iPhone connected, you can have everything else connected, and they will get the message. So if you have an app that always listens to that specific server on that specific topic, a topic is something you create. So if, if, if I have an attic and I have a temperature sensor, I might create a topic that's called my home slash attic slash temperature. And there is where I want my sensor data to go. And then I can point my phone to that, you know, Attic in my house, my home, attic, temperature, sensor one. Because then I don't have to you know, listen to everything that is on the server. So how many of you here have heard about MQTT before? A little more hands. Yeah, good. All right. How many of you use MQTT? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's increasing. That's good. Now, there's also something in the manual. I read the manual through all this and actually found it during a pen test and asked, what is this? <laughs> now, the manual says that there is a special function called the hashtag that you can subscribe to, like you subscribe to your attic. When you subscribe to hashtag, you will see everything that is being transmitted on the server. So if you have a lawnmower, if you have a cough machine that's also connected, you will see the data that they're transmitting. So I used Shodan by John Madeley to see if that one had MQTT open. And back then, I found 17,711 devices, or servers, so-called. I don't know how many clients they had. And you can also see the topics. You can see active MQ, advisory, customer topic. It doesn't just give you much. It's like saying, my home attic. It's blah, right? What I wanted to do is I wanted to scan the entire internet. And while doing so, I wanted to subscribe to hashtag on everything that had the MQTT port open. And, of course, required no authentication. Now, back then, I found uh, about 57,000 brokers slash servers online. One of the things I found, for instance, was a pipeline pressure control server down in a um, warmer country. The excess is me actually censoring the stuff because some of this stuff is, is highly sensitive. And uh, in this one, you can actually see the pipeline pressure. 
you can actually see the username and passwords being sent to the control system. And the other one that says Candidat de Satellite 12. The top one with the X's I had to take out because they actually represented a, a government that does surveillance in that specific country that I hopefully plan to visit someday. So that's why I'm not telling anybody about it. Now, they were monitoring someone called Ramon. And I could follow Ramon's GPS coordinates on Google Maps. And you can see, you can see him move. You can see the speed of the vehicle. You can see that it was running on battery. So someone was doing something. Some things I found yesterday. Too much spare time or hashtag no life. That's how kids say it. How about a car? All right. This actually I had to X out, of course, because it's a well-known well -known brand. They connected the car to this protocol. They also connected <laughs> a particle accelerator. <laughs> um, I can't say what country or else, you know, silver bracelets and whoop whoop. Um, <laughs> but uh, there were there were signs that they were transmitting data between particle accelerators over MQTT. Now, down below, we have coffee. Stupid question. How many of you here like coffee? Five guys, nice, nice. <laughs> In Sweden, we have a coffee called Mualbais, which is, I'm not doing any commercials, so I'll just nod. Um, we also have a brand called Colombia. And yes, this is uh, from a Swedish broker somewhere that I found. And they're actually posting when the brew is done, how the mix is, how much they put in every mix. We also have the fun stuff I found like five minutes ago before standing on stage. So that one looks a little bit... It could be too much text though. I've highlighted some of them in green, which is uh, float, serve, pump, and of course some PLCs. So this is some kind of industrial control system. Horrible. Now, <laughs> there's also radiation sensors online for nuclear power plants, vacuum cleaners and fitness bands. And my first scan, I found 15,000 ATMs connected. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but it's just, you know, information. City billboard. And even raw database statements that goes into some database somewhere, I guess. And what does that open up? If, if, if you take the content of the MQTT and you throw it on a web page, well, then you have cross-site scripting and you have SQL injection here. Now we're back to the basic vulnerabilities of OWASP. And to get you a little bit, you know, fired up, we're going to do a demo. But first of all, I have to let make you guys clear that this is not brought on by Tesla and their cars, or this is not a default thing in a Tesla car. The user of this Tesla car has added the MQTT module to his own Tesla, and then exposed that one to the internet. No blame should be done towards Tesla. And now we uh, pray to the um, demo gods. I sacrificed two beers yesterday. Let's see if um, that actually worked. So I'm going to mirror the display. So, oh my god, let's hope. So much stuff, man. Um, I had a console here open, which was like font 5000. Does it look good? Can you actually see it? Yeah. Nice fading there, man. Awesome. <sighs> All right. We will start with the um, Tesla. All right, I will kill it. Here we can see a lot of data for the uh, Tesla. Maybe I should, uh, I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger. Just to be uh, very, very, very 
48 is that is that doable? yeah oh holy shit and then we scroll up you can see uh, charger power he's not charging the car at the moment um the front defroster is at level three okay that's nice um we have the latitude and longitude as well for the car. And last time I checked, he was at a hospital in Norway, so I hope he's all right. Now, this is a Tesla car, and the, I, I will let you in on a, on a little secret. I, I'll do this first. So let's... Let's, um, let's do this first. Yeah, masqueraded the IP address, so you can do the same. So this is the radiation. One of the sensors that is actually leaking information. There, there's, there's a little secret. <laughs> All the things you have seen so far, like the Tesla car and, and this stuff here, I can actually write to it. Yeah, someone just died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> that means that I can write to this radiation sensor. I can see that the microsquirt is like 0, 0.0. Now, in a power plant, there's this sound that goes, ah, ah, when the radiation is high, or you should be alert. Some power plants even have that running all the time, and when it's silent, people go, oh. Now, in case of radiation, it would be possible to turn on the fans automatically and get the, the radiated air out as quick as possible. Um, at the same time, you know, warn the user, maybe you should leave the area or you're going to get you know, damaged. Now, if I'm able to write to this, I would be able to say that this, it's radiation is zero, radiation is zero, and keep spamming radiation zero, and the alarms would not blare, and the fans would not turn on. Yeah, I know. It's um Is it crazy? I will continue with the PowerPoint. Oh, it's a load, yeah. There we go. <coughs> now <laughs> IoT is, is much more and not only medical devices. IoT is awesome because it gives us shit like a salt shaker that can actually play music. What happened? Like, yeah, let's make a salt shaker that can play music. I mean, you, you can pass it around. <laughs> awesome. And from rumors, I heard that someone found a vulnerability in this specific salt shaker. Unconfirmed. Twitter. How many have seen this one before? None. This is a one. Woo! Hooray for you. This is, a, this is like an egg counter thing that you can have at home. So you put your eggs in and you can send you an alert on your way home saying, man, you're almost out of egg. You can go, shit, phew, lucky I had that because that one can like, now I can pick up some eggs. <laughs> shit. The only problem is that this one was actually launched. And the only problem is that nobody thought about the Wi-Fi signal inside the fridge. So once you close the door, it's <laughs> great job. For a little more scarier examples, um, how about kids' toys, like bears, that allow you to speak to the kids and say like, "Hello, mommy," and they will respond back, scary as fuck, but still, <laughs> that one goes to like online, and transmits data, and goes back. Now, there was this case, maybe like a couple of years, not a year ago, like half a year ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they got hacked. Like if someone leaked the personal voices of kids and adults, and even sensitive information such as who the kids were and what they were doing, because you had an IoT teddy bear. <laughs> oh, jeez, I want one. Yeah, email accounts, two million voice recordings of children and their parents. 
as well as email addresses and password data for more than 800,000 accounts. Damn. How many of you in here have a smart TV? Yeah, you, you kind of cannot have one unless you're, you're like stuck with the big ass one. Now, smart TVs are great <laughs> when, until they're not. I mean, who needs Twitter and Facebook on your fucking TV? Jesus Christ. Now, in this, in this case, um, you know, there was leaked documents that, that NSA could actually, and this sounds like something from X-Files, can actually hack your TV through the, the TV signal. So when you're watching TV and the, the NSA van pulls up, like big letters, NSA, we're watching you, and just, you know, clicks a button and takes over your TV. And some TVs have cameras and microphones and record everything you say, even when the TV is off. So, um, nuclear power plants and, and all these things fit down with physical injury. And not all of them are running over MQTT. And uh, yes, I cheated. Come on. All those IT devices, your fitness bands that are public, and, and the Pikachu sheet servers I've seen. It's, yeah, well, hashtag life priorities. Um, it's all fun until it's not for the radiation sensors and all the other stuff as well. And now, I even found, in my first scan, I actually found prisons where you can see the cell block doors getting open. If you remember a little bit, I said I can write to that. That means that I could send the exact same command to all the doors in the prison and say, open up and say, ah. Don't do that. <laughs> Just a small tip. People can get hurt. <laughs> For this MQTT thing that I'm speaking about, the MQTT here is actually clear text and unencrypted. It's not MQTT's fault, of course. MQTT supports usernames and passwords and as well as encryption. The thing is when you install those things, and I installed them myself, you do like next, 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 finish, I'm done. Oh, it works. I'll just put it here. Now that's the problem. No username, no password, no authentication. So how can you protect yourself? <laughs> well, duh, I just stated username, passwords, and encryption, of course. If you're unsure if you're accidentally or some third-party suppliers running MQTT in your network, see if you can do a scan. One of your network tech guys can actually do that. Looking for port 1883. That is the unencrypted version. Now, username and password doesn't help a lot because a friend of mine who has a lot more time than I did actually made a brute forcer for MQTT now. It's called Joffrey. Not my friend. His, his name is Alex, but... He made a tool called Joffrey that can actually brute for stuff and does a pretty well job. So now we're stuck with that as well. Thank you, Alex. So IoT is also Mirai botnet. And four years ago, I actually um, made a small demo where you could take Dreambox devices that you find online. And the default credentials for those are root Dreambox or Dreambox root, Dreambox, Dreambox root, root. And if you can harvest those which show that, the online internet scanner, and just you know try and log into a couple of them. Turns out that just for the standard Dreambox stuff that is used for carding, I counted like 100,000 or 80,000 you could log into. And that enables me to build a botnet in a couple of minutes. Half a day. Okay, half a day. I'll say, let's say half a day. Now, that was four years before Mirai, and then Mirai hit with great power, 280 gigabits per second. Boom. And that was IoT devices and cameras and all the other things as well. See if this one can play. Oh, they can play. So, I mean, this shows us how vulnerable we really are and how, how much bullshit. Do you really need a music salt shaker or an egg counter? or Do you really, really need that? I know I do because it's freaking awesome. And what happens is we don't have anything to actually 
take care of our security. You get this sheep product made by, you know, sheep components, sheep software, and okay, a little bit pricey, but still freaking awesome. And you put it there, and it's uh, end of life after like a month, discontinued, no more updates, no more patches, and you have that in your network. There was an instance where one guy's toaster actually tried to crack his Wi-Fi password. You just Google it. He brought, he brought like in down there. He brought like in in Asia. He brought like a toaster, right? That started attacking his Wi-Fi because every time he toasted bread, the wi the Wi-Fi went down. What? But down there, that is pretty. That is common. You're allowed to do that down there. That like it needed Wi-Fi to inject some commercial into the into the Wi-Fi. So when you're surfing, you get like toast commercial. I don't know, like butter. What I know. It's serious. We have no standard for IoT. We have no standard for security. We have no standard for how to code for IoT, and that's. That's dangerous, and we need to have that. Now, I'll scare you a little bit. I told you I found some stuff as well that is questionable. How about the blood pressure monitor? Pretty bad enough. And you can see the heart pulse and value 62, so he's fairly fit, or maybe he's lying down, I don't know. There is. Everything from insulin pumps to pacemakers to incubators that are just online. On some of them are on public servers. Because when the public test server goes down, ooh, whoop -de da then the phone starts ringing at that company saying, you have to bring it back up, Jesus Christ. So fitness bands as well. Same thing there is it's not, you know, if I can change your fitness data, ha, 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 I'll get you fat. So how are we in time, Marcus? Are we well, you have uh, three minutes, my three friend. Three minutes. OK, that's all I get. So that's cool. So with that, you know, feel free to hit me up. And if you have questions, just get them out there. So thank you very much, guys.